Okay. That's all. All right. Before before we begin this process, I just want to <coughs> make a statement. I understand and I hear your frustration with the process. Quite frankly, this is my third go-round with an appointment process, and I'm not happy with the process. Um, I had hoped as board president this year that um, our policy committee was going to review this. Unfortunately, the timing of the resignation occurred before the review could take place. We have to follow the, this bylaw as it is written right now, as much as we would like to um, look at it and um, have another way of doing this process. That being said, um, we, we understand that the community has a different take on what they see as our board policy, but quite frankly, a lot of it is written in state law. And so we don't have as much flexibility as everybody. It's not as simple as what you think it may be. And that is why the policy hasn't changed in so many years. But we, I do intend, we did have um, the Michigan Association of School Boards Legal um, do a presentation for us in January, as soon as I became board president. And we went over all of our board policies, and this was one of the first ones on our agenda to um, take a look at and see how we could rewrite it. Quite frankly, I was a charter commissioner for the city of Dearborn, and it took us two years to review and rewrite the city charter. Uh, rewriting bylaws and policies is, is not a quick one-day fix. There, there are rules around it. So I appreciate the fact that you are here tonight speaking your um, feelings. I, I understand where you're coming from, and now I would like you to indulge us in the process that we're going to take place, and be, please be respectful of the fact that at this moment in time, it is the board's uh, decision to make. Thank you. Yes, Trustee Thorpe. To add on to what you were just saying, uh, while we found, when we found out there would be a potential for resignation, we didn't feel that that would be the right time to try to change the policy knowing that it was about to happen. That wouldn't look good to try to put that through right beforehand. So we were intentionally waiting until everything settled down and then we can address it. But it will, it will be reviewed. All right then. Um, first we're gonna open up for discussion and I'm, the, I'm not gonna to point to anybody in particular. Would anybody like to start the discussion of what you're looking for in um, when you're going through this process of selecting um, an appointment. Trustee I'd be McDonald. happy to start. Um, I am looking for somebody that has a passion for public education and a passion for children and making sure that our students um, get the quality education that they deserve. I'm looking for somebody who has been continuously engaged in the community as well as interested in the process and what the board goes through. I am going to put out a name. Um, I have been impressed with Adam Mosep for a long time for a few reasons. One, that he has support of the community. It's been long-lasting support. It's been continuous support, and he has, and it continues to grow. Um, he's also uh, determined. He's dedicated. He wants to do this job. He has shown that over and over again because he keeps applying for this job or running for this position. So it shows me in his heart that what he wants to do is further the educational opportunities for our students here in Dearborn, and I think that's huge. Um, he continues to be involved, he learns and grows, he attends the board meetings and the college meetings. Um, it also would add diversity to the board. Um, his dedication to students in public education, as I mentioned. Um, his stick to itiveness again, he has just not given up, and I think that just shows, again, how much he uh, desires to do this particular job. I believe he would make an excellent addition to the board. But I also want to mention someone else, because in our process conversation, I had leaned towards the side of the recommendation of MASB, and that was to bring forth your two top candidates. So I also want to mention someone else that, to me, I think that she has... Um, some of the same qualities that I'm looking for, and that is Colette Richard. She has a, a history of involvement and leadership in, uh, on many levels in the district. It's been longstanding. She served as the president of the Dearborn uh, PTA Council for many years, and when she was, uh, or when the district was going through a lot of 
um, budget cuts, she and I both led parent um, protests to Lansing on numerous occasions to protest the budget cuts and to advocate for public education. I've seen her at work. I think she um, has a heart for education. Like I said, that's one of my main objectives, objectives in finding someone. Um, her knowledge of special education needs in the population of our special education student is something that we have been lacking on the board. So I think that expertise would be an asset. Um, she brings in many perspectives, the parent perspective, the student perspective, the advocate perspective, and she had been a district employee. Um, so again, I also believe that she would be an excellent board member. So those are kind of my thought process and the candidates that rose in my mind and what I'm looking for. Next, is there anybody else who would like to? Are we putting out names or not, what not, we, we, we will after we just have, I just wanted to open it for a general discussion first. If everybody's done with that, we, that will be the next process. But you also said that I could right. mention names if you that could, would help But make, that is not yeah, putting the names forward yet. Okay. Yes, All Dr. I, Mead. I think that the main role of the board is to establish a vision for education, uh, a mission. What is it that we really want to do? Uh, to develop a strategic plan and with specific and measurable goals. So I'm looking for a person who is capable of having that kind of vision, understanding our mission, and be willing to do all the hard work to put together a strategic plan and to establish goals. Therefore, once that work is done, then you turn to the superintendent and the president to implement all the mission, the vision, et cetera. So I'm looking for a person that not only has the vision and the mission and is willing to work for strategic planning goals, but also to understand that they need to supervise the president and the superintendent to achieve and to support the superintendent and president to achieve these goals. So I'm looking for somebody who can also understand management, can also understand what is the overview of, of education, for our students in the primary through 12th grade and the college. Is there anybody else who'd like to add anything? Trustee Thorpe? I believe that our board should reflect the community makeup, and I believe that's something we can work on a little bit with this appointment. I also would like to see uh, the new board member have young children in the district. I think it is important to have uh, members of the board that have literally the skin in the game anyone else all right then are we ready to go to our selection i'll, yes. I'll speak on, on oh, the topic okay. so uh when i was thinking about this which has been just about constant um and <clears throat> frequently between 1 and 3 a.m um i thought about it a lot i reflected on it i went back i rewatched all the videos um I looked at all of the submissions that people gave to us. I Googled um, everyone, listened to feedback, and asked people uh, their judgment, people who have good judgment, what things they would advise, people who are familiar with this board and with our community. So that's how I started to approach it. And uh, I was very concerned for someone who can maintain the reputation of the board, the district, and the college. Um, over the last 20 years, we've been ably governed by this board, and this board has done a good job, in my opinion. We've survived very difficult times. We've been in desperate situations, practically mid-year cuts, surprise uh, finances. So we have shown uh, good governance, and I want that to continue. Part of good governance means communicating with each other, being able to innovate and to compromise, means being able to work effectively to talk together, um, to have confidence and trust. Um, unlike our federal government, we need to communicate to each other. We need to try to, and I hope in this process we'll be able to move some of us one way or another. 
Uh, that's our process, but there is also another process that ha has occurred. So let me back up. So uh, I'm very concerned that anyone would attack the board and the board process. Uh, we have to be governed by something. We all know that democracy is a messy process and it doesn't look pretty sometimes, but that's the way it is. Um, and ultimately, that happens, in our case, just about every two years. We're constantly in an election cycle. Um, and our voters have spoken. So uh, I'm going to respect the decision of the voters. And what I want to put forward is that we need to mirror our community. I agree with that, that's already been mentioned. Uh, I don't want somebody who thinks and looks exactly like me. I'd like somebody who's very different than me. But I'd like it to be someone who can augment our knowledge and experiences as a group. I want someone who's multifaceted. I want someone who has different, unique perspectives. So uh, the considerations for me are the person's integrity, good reputation, desire and ability, definitely, to represent, ability to work with many different types of people and know what issues to compromise on and which issues to stand on principle and doggedly defend. Uh, there has to be someone with broad intellectual knowledge of not just our schools, but the community, the education world. And I'm thinking that we need a fresh perspective. So there are a couple of people who uh, have no allegiances, but I should say, first of all, I don't really know any of the candidates. I don't know at all any of the candidates, and I have no ties to any of the candidates. Uh, I would like to have somebody who can come on. This person is only going to sit here for a year and a half, mm -hmm. and then the voters can weigh in again. And when the voters weigh in, I do not expect to be here then. I do not expect to run again. I hope that whoever they vote for will uh, work well with everyone else who's elected. Uh, but I think someone should be here who has a fresh perspective, and I saw that in a couple of people. Uh, one person, so I'll put out a couple of names. One person that I saw that in was Samra Luckman. Uh, she, had, she called herself an intellectual. Uh, she is able to compromise. She said to us, I rarely speak in absolutes. Uh, she had unusual experience. She had courage. She stopped her interview and said, uh, oh, I want to look back to the question. So uh, I thought she showed unusual presence during the interview process. Uh, again, I think she would uh, bring some diversity to our board. So I thought she was a good candidate. She was up to date on the read by third grade law. Uh, so she would be a good candidate that I would advance to the rest of the board. After Ms. Luckman, I also thought Mr. Namey uh, had professionalism. He had legal knowledge we could absolutely benefit from. Uh, he had polish and poise. Uh, he was very balanced. Again, he would bring diversity, and our board needs that. Um, but uh, specifically, he knows contracts also. So uh, we, every single meeting we talk about, uh, we're approving contracts all the time. So for those reasons, I thought that uh, either those people would be good, but uh, everyone should be thanked, everyone who advanced themselves, uh, because we all know sitting here that it's not easy to sit in front of an audience, take questions like this. People ask us questions like crazy. And uh, it, it's not easy. I mean, you're subject to lots and lots of public scrutiny. So everyone who advanced themselves deserves our respect. And I, I want to try to do my best to give that. Um, I thank all of the candidates. There were some, uh, there was really a, an outstanding performance. Uh, there were, so uh, I hope we can work through this and get someone that we can uh, all agree on. Trustee Baird, did you want to? Part of my uh, thoughts, or, I want to just go right into it, so if that's okay with you. Right well, now. not oh, okay. then. Then I'll, I'll say my 
quick okay, thoughts, and then and then you're you're saying you're ready to yes. go. Okay. Um, I think it's been pretty clear since this is my third time to a point that uh, my philosophy has always been my uh, two choices the last two rounds were people who had already been duly elected and were past were former um, board members and there was a reason for that not only were they experienced with board protocol and and the issues that they would be faced for the interim that they would be here but because they were voted on by the public and to me that is important uh, I don't feel comfortable that six of us are making a decision for the entire community. I feel that we're um, at a disadvantage when we disrespect and ignore the voices of the community who have already spoken at one time or another. Uh, the past two rounds, we did have some people who had actually attained that position and were fully elected officials. Uh, this round, we don't have that particular circumstance, but we do have an individual who has committed himself to the community on a um, continuous basis, is known throughout the community. We also, I do agree that we have a, a, another um, candidate who has also been um, a strong advocate and has put herself out there in the community as well um, on a regular basis for years uh, volunteering. In, they're known in the schools, they're known in their neighborhoods, they're familiar faces, they're voices for their neighbors, they're voices for their students. And to me that is representative of what this board stands for. We're elected for a reason. This is a democracy. We are elected to represent our neighbors, our other community members. We're not here to be uh, judge and jury and choose an individual because we think that's best for everyone. That's not our role, in my personal opinion. And whether I believe in somebody's policies or politics, I do believe that the electorate is where our, our uh, voice should be um, considered. And that's how I am going to move forward in um, my selection process. So now I'm going to go, I, I'm just, well, I, maybe we should do it alphabetically. You want to do it off the roll call? Who's Trustee Barry going to? Oh, Trustee Barry. Oh, yeah, well, no you're, you're B, so you're alphabetically There's the first. There's no A's here, so I'm first. <laughs> first, Madam Chair, I'd like to recognize our student counterparts. Zayn and Brahim are still with us here tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Me, so thank you. <laughs> oh, yes. You're getting a little lesson on uh, <laughs> city I they, politics. I know they got school tomorrow, so we might have to move this along a little bit. Uh, we are a very blessed community. I've always said that. And to see what I saw last week and to hear from two attorneys, seven active members of our community, it, it was an honor. It was, it was a very good process. Uh, we heard from seven people, and I don't know if it was mentioned, there's three other there's people. There's three other, we have, we yes, I, I, I'm sorry, yes, we have you ten can, uh, applicants total. Um, three were not able to make the um, interview process. But are still considered. But are still in consideration. I just want to make sure that, we, you know, we, that was, give you an opportunity yes, to thank clear you. that Yes, thank up. you, Trustee Barry. Okay. When a vacancy occurred on our school board, I received calls from three friends, close friends, one of them I've known since 1972. So quick math tells you that I'm old. Uh, I shared my thoughts with them, but I also disclosed that I would approach the process with an open mind. All three responded with that they understood and they respected my position. Even though one of them is still mad at me, none of them applied for the appointment. I, like most of my colleagues, have received many phone calls and many emails the last 10 days or so regarding the, regarding the, the appointment process. Went through a lot of the emails, but there's a few I'll just mention, what, I'll just summarize. Uh, one of our constituents says, hello Dearborn School Board members, I write to you as a citizen concerning the appointment of the new school board member. 
I would have hoped that after the last time this happened, there would have been some discussion on how to properly carry out the appointment process. I saw po posting on the community forum that that process has not been established yet. And my colleagues spoke about the process and we were thinking about changing our policy. Uh, you see, our current policy, my opinion, is very divisive. The last two processes divided our board and eventually poured into our community and divided our community. That has not been fun. See, the, like, like our attorney mentioned earlier, our, our policy is part of our bylaw. What that means is we have the ability to change it. So what that means is six or seven board members sat here and put this process together. That is too much power for six people to make that decision. Six people are making a decision for 100,000 people or about 100,000 people in the city. Our council does it a little bit differently. Uh, our, our council, their policy is part of the charter. And the charter commission is elected. They're elected to serve on that commission to review the policy of the cities, the city. And the, the policy for the city council reads, if a vacancy occurs on the council, then that candidate not elected receiving the highest number of votes for office of the council member in the preceding election who is qualified and will accept the position shall be appointed to fill the vacancy. Each success, successive vacancy that occurs on the council shall be filled in the same manner. If there is no such person, then the council shall appoint some other qualified individual to fill the vacancy for the next by term. The difference between our bylaw and what the city charter says is, is what I value most. We live in a democracy. We have to respect what our voters, what our constituents say. What I share with my good friends is that the value I have for the voters of Dearborn when they will go into the voting booth. There are two applicants in front of us that actually ran a campaign. They actually went out there and talked to constituents. There's one that actually ran for the school board. Like I heard earlier, it's been his dream. It's been his mission. It's been, I mean, there's nothing else he'd rather do than serve on this board. I've never heard this person mention that he wants to run for council, run for state rep, or run for any other elected office other than the school board. Even though Adil Mozib was the candidate not elected, receiving the highest number of votes for the office of the Irwin School Board in the preceding election. And even though he didn't just run one campaign, he ran two. And he's actually talked to thousands and thousands and thousands of our constituents that I heard of and that you heard from. I heard from and you heard from. And guesstimating, we heard the numbers I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, receiving almost 10,000 votes, a little bit less, a little bit higher in different campaigns. That is powerful. I think the, our voters already made our decision. Yes, we have bylaws and we have policies that we have to follow, and that's what we're doing here tonight. The other two questions that have to be answered is, is he qualified? And will he accept the position to fill the vacancy? I think for, by applying for the vacancy, he already answered question number two. Question number one is he qualified? Again, we all did receive this from MASB checklist for, for qualified school board, or school board or candidate. <clears throat> Excuse me. Checklist for qualified school board candidates. In bold print here it says, put children first. No personal or political agenda. Provide leadership. Appreciate diversity. Understand budget and finances. No educational policy. 
demonstrate integrity, understands community outreach, and expects accountability. I sat through the interview process last week and I took notes, I took some good notes. I actually turned my, my notes into an Excel sheet. Like again, I would, I'm gonna repeat, we are blessed for the candidates that we have. And I think it was alluded earlier that there's a campaign, there's an election next year for four spots, four spots. If you don't get appointed tonight or whenever we do the appointment, I would love to see everybody apply and file and run a campaign and go out there and talk to the constituents and talk to us and go through that process because it's an amazing process. There were three candidates that I checked off <coughs> that had all these values I heard from the, from the interviews. There was another one that still gets an A minus in my book. There's only one that that person missed. So is he qualified, Adel Mazib? I definitely think he's qualified. I think the, the voters have spoken the last two campaigns. So I am on forward uh, Adil Muzib to be appointed for the vacant seat on the Dearborn School Board. Okay. okay. Trustee Lane, we're, we're putting forward now our choice. Oh, uh, then I'll advance uh, Samra Luckman. Okay, Trustee McDonald. Adam Moza. Trustee Mead. Mohammed Mimi. Trustee Thorpe. Adam Moza. And President Petlichkoff. Adam Moza. <laughs> Trustee Barry. I put a motion on the table to offer Adam Moza the appointment for Dearborn School Board. I second. We don't even need a second. No, All that's right, right, we then. don't. <laughs> uh, roll call, please. Hold on. <laughs> Hussein Barry. Yes. Mary Lane. No. Roxanne McDonald. Yes. Michael Mead. No. Jim Thorpe. Yes. Uh, Mary Petlichkoff. Yes. Otto Moza, you are now an appointed <laughs> board member. <laughs> All right, we need to make a motion. Wait, wait, we're not done yet. We need to make the official motion. Okay. Um, do you want to do you want to read it as it's printed here? Move there. Oh yeah. For the yeah. action item. Yeah. Move that action item one be approved as recommended in this agenda. Well, move that Adam Moses be right. nominated to serve as trustee of the P-12 Board of Education and the Henry Ford College Board of Trustees until the certification Sorry. Sorry. of the next school board election on November 3rd, 2020. So moved. Support? And we already had the roll call vote. All right. We are adjourned. <clears throat> And I want to thank all of those um, applicants who, who put forward the time and effort to, um, and, a, and as I said, 2020 is an election year. Thank you. Do we want to keep this one?